Hello, everyone. This is uh, Carl from Cambrian AI Research again. And once again, I've got an interesting topic to share with you and an interesting uh, person to interview about it. Uh, Mike Henry is founder and CEO of Mythic, uh, the company that is inv investing in building platforms to do computation in memory. It's analog AI. Analog AI is coming um, and it's coming perhaps sooner than many of us thought it would. So welcome, welcome to the, the, the show, Mike. Thanks for having me, Carl. Excited to excited to chat. Awesome. So let's see. Why don't you start with uh, just t tell the audience about Mythic. Many of them probably don't know about you, and it's time to change that. Yeah. So you know, Mythic, we we uh, we were actually one of the very early entrants in the AI hardware space. Um, the company dates actually all the way back to 2012, and you know, right from the very beginning, you know, we we saw the we, we saw that the compute demands of AI was going to far outpace what Moore's law and digital scaling was going to provide. And we said that this is the opportunity to do something big and bold and ambitious that will you know, carry AI forward for decades. And we started down the road of, of analog compute, um, you know, about four and a half years of really deep R&D with a team of five and raised our you know, first round of financing in, in 2016. Um, since then, we've grown the team from five to about 130 and raised 160 million in venture financing, and we'll be releasing our first um, you know, analog product to the market this year. It's really exciting for us because you know, we spent eight or nine years of everybody telling us it's going to be impossible to release an analog compute product. And you know, this was a very tough pioneering road, but, but here we are with you know, products coming out, and we're very excited by it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, a lot of people were skeptical that you do anything more than two bits yeah, in, exactly. in analog, right? <laughs> so uh, that, that's great. Uh, so what? T tell the audience about analog. What, why, what, what do you mean by analog computing in memory? And what are the performance power area kind of benefits of doing it, uh, doing it in analog versus a good old fashioned digital? So yeah, that, I, I, that you know, kind of to, to you know, take a step back about really the, the vision for, for why we we mm -hmm. went down this road um, in the first place, and you know it, it's kind of it starts with the demand side, and you know the way we think about AI right now, and the way that we saw people looking at AI in the the last three or four years, you know it's running a single application, and it's you know the latency is not great. I mean, you're talking you know maybe anywhere from ten to hundred milliseconds of latency, and you can actually almost draw parallels to the early days of computing in the 50s and 60s, where it was all focused on one single application running very slowly. And you know, we just saw that the, the world, decades to come from now, it, it's they're going to be thinking far bigger and far more, uh, you know, comprehensive for artificial intelligence on the hardware perspective. You know, you're you're going to need a hundred thousand times more capacity than what we have now on a chip. You're going to be having uh, you know, things running concurrently, things needing to be instantly accessible with low latency. There could be a hundred different AI applications running on a single hardware platform. Um, we also see that every electronic product that we know, you know, is going to need this kind of platform. Um, it's going to be things that are like familiar, like, like cameras and uh, you know, security cameras and robots and cars and gaming products. It's going to be, you know, stuff that we see emerging, like cramming a small chip into the frame of a glasses that has the compute power of multiple GPUs. And there's gonna be stuff that we probably haven't even really thought of yet that, you know, it's gonna be really exciting. Um, you know, so serving that kind of future world is, is really, you know, why we went down the analog road. And we really see analog compute as the only way to actually deliver that kind of 100,000 X improvement. So. Wow, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I've, I've often felt that and said that the, uh, the, the not having a chip that doesn't run AI will become an exception, certainly. With yeah, these, yeah exactly. Like, but it's, it's, it's just think AI. about, you know, now, like AI right now, think about computers in the 60s and, and where that world moved and yep. like where AI is going to move. And then you look at the, you know, the, the economics of, of Moore's law digital scaling, and it's really just not going to get us there. So that, that's really why we started down on this journey. Exactly. Let me ask, it just, thought just occurred to me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I believe that a lot of applications, high value applications will require SOCs. Do you, 
you envision being able to have like a multi-tile or multi-chiplet kind of approach eventually with uh, SOCs with digital and analog uh, componentry next to each other? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely where, where we see the, the world going. And, you know, if you can, and again, I'll, I'll draw another parallel here. You can look at like memory technology and say that, you know, the kinds of densities that you can achieve with memory and chips like flash memory chips and DRAM chips, it's not the kind of thing you could ever imagine being integrated onto a you know, digital CMOS process. And so the world of SOCs has already moved to a world of like, you know, specialized external chiplets and, you know, matched with a very capable um, processor architecture on the, the main SOC. And so this future world that I'm painting here of having, you know, tens or hundreds or billions or even trillions of weights stored inside of a single chip and having them instantly accessible and, you know, running neural networks in single digit millisecond latencies, you know, really in order to execute on that vision, it's going to have to be an external chiplet. And, um, and we think that aligns really well with like where the industry is moving in general. So yeah, we, we absolutely intend on having single or multiple chiplets paired up with the main host processor. And, you know, we're going to be relying, you know, we'll be relying on, um, you know, the really incredibly dense, the, the incredible density you can achieve with non-volatile memory and being able to compute inside of it in the analog domain, you know, we're going to be relying on those, that process technology for our chiplets. And then the main host SOC will probably be a mix of, you know, modern state-of-the-art digital CMOS processes. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So I think we both agree AI will become pervasive. Where do you plan to start? What, what markets and models do you see as a good fit for, let's say, your first generation platform? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good way to phrase it because you know the the long term vision is this uh, you know is you know, you think billions and trillions of of synapses and and you know big vision but yeah you have to start somewhere and that's really what the the last four years has been the journey of is getting our first product out into the market um, you know so the first product you know the you know we we've we um, you know by the time this goes on we will have announced a couple products uh, you know coming to the market and. Uh, the compute and memory is going to be based on flash memory. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the densities we can achieve with, with flash memory and compute and memory is going to be far greater than the, you know, SRAM based chips out there. Um, you know, and, and ranging anywhere from, uh, you know, the high seventies, uh, you know, 70 million weights and above all the way up to a PCI express card with, um, you know, more than a billion weights on it instantly accessible. And we are, uh, you know, targeting computer vision initially. You know, the, the reason we're targeting computer vision is just that that is what is becoming pervasive and that's where the demand is for very high-end compute. Mm -hmm. um, we have many, many customers who have high volume products they wanna build and are looking for a cost-effective solution. And the computer vision algorithms are running struggle to run on a GPU and they need a very low cost, low power solution. So it's a market where there's a huge willingness to pay for something that is, you know, powerful, low cost, low power. Cool. That's, that's cool. Um, so uh, what challenges did you have to challenge? What challenges did you have to tackle to make analog computing real? I mentioned earlier, you know, you can only do two bits. Uh, what, what kind of challenges did you address and how did you address them? Yeah, so the, um, I, I think I, I, there's probably two, two paths we could go down as far as like what were the you know, significant challenges that we had to overcome. So you know, the first actually starts with software right? and you know, very early on in the company, like going, this, is, this goes back to the beginning days of the company. You know, we said that, okay, we want to build like an analog compute engine but to the developer we want this to not look like there's analog compute under the hood mm -hmm. like this has to look like all the other hardware you know digital hardware products that are inevitably going to be out in the market and that means having you know a software ecosystem it means having a compiler you know having uh the ability to run whatever the state-of-the-art model is at the time and you know map that onto the chip and the the devil in the details there is that 
that world is flexibility. It means you have to be mixed signal. You have to be digital mm -hmm. and analog mixed together. The digital gives you the flexibility. The analog gives you that raw compute power. Now, what that translated to in the actual chip we had to build is tens of thousands of ADCs and DACs on a single chip. That is a level of integration that might be a thousand times greater than what most people are used to thinking about. You know? mm -hmm. And that's often why everybody said this would be impossible. Is how do you possibly fit tens of thousands of ADCs on a low power chip? Um, but you know, we figured it out. We came up with some very unique topologies that have never even been seen before. And you know, we, we solved that challenge of how to get that immense level of compact integration of analog. Um, and the second, the, so that's the first one, was that you know, the, the software trickles down to having digital architecture trickles down to having a huge number of DACs and ADCs. Um, the second challenge, you know, partly what you said, which is the precision, but it's also you know, reliability. Right? So um, you know, something everybody we'd often hear is like, how will you ever get this to perform reliably when the temperature changes, when you know, the process variation kicks in when the flash, you know, acts finicky when you're trying to do a, a fine multi-level storage on it. And, you know, I, I mean, I could give a lot of detailed answers on all of the various techniques we do for compensating and calibrating for, you know, all of the analog effects that kick in. I, I think the very short answer to that is simply that that is actually a well understood problem in the analog world. Yeah, anybody who does analog design these days has to deal with manufacturing variation. You know, they have to deal with changing temperatures and bouncing supplies and things like that. So we didn't necessarily invent the idea of how to build robust and reliable analog, but what we did do is say, how do you do that on a scale of you know, tens of thousands of analog components? Um, that's really what we've mastered that's very unique in the company is the scale at which we do that kind of compensation and calibrating to get you know, the eight bit level accuracy. Interesting. So there's um, obviously a couple of other competitors hoping to, to come out with, a, with AI chips that run on analog circuitry, including Intel and IBM, they're kind of big, uh, but you're going to have first mover advantage, right? Uh, tell us a little bit about your first generation chip. By the time this is posted on my website, uh, you will have announced it. So uh, can, can you kind of give us a thumbnail sketch of what this new gen first generation platform looks like? Yeah, sure. And, and the, you know, the, um, the, the idea that you can build maybe a single compute block and say, hey, look, we put analog currents in and measured it and look, there's multiplication and adding happening. Hey, we, we built an, you know, that, but that is, that is like 4% of the work, the total work involved. And, you know, so if you look at our first product, it's very comprehensive. We put a lot of work into the overall product package beyond just the analog compute. You know, we, we have, um, you know, PC, we have a number of different flavors of PCI Express cards, uh, including, you know, a very tiny AE key. And, you know, that allows you to really easily plug it into any system. And, you know, we have host drivers that are very lightweight and simple. We have, um, you know, very easy push button, you know, tools to make the chip usable in any system. And then, you know, you go inside of it, we have a, a very nice digital architecture that supports a whole range of convolutional and, you know, other neural networks. You know, we can run the state-of-the-art object detectors, pose detectors, um, you know, depth estimation, you know, all of these really popular computer vision models can run seamlessly on the chip. Uh, and then you look at the software ecosystem, you know, we have an optimization framework that makes you know, quantizing floating point models very easy. And, right. um, and we have a compiler that gets very high performance levels, far higher than most chips out there, uh, totally push button. You know, there's no coding, there's no hand optimizing, none of that. Like, so it's actually a very seamless ecosystem that we've built. I would say, you know, 60 to 70% of the engineering we've done has nothing to do with analog compute, actually. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. So. Look forward to seeing the specs when it comes out. Uh, when do you think you'd be, have, be shipping into production? I know you're sampling now. That was an announcement a few months back. But when do you think you'll be uh, shipping in production volumes? And can we expect some uh, industry standard benchmarks, perhaps even ML perf? 
Yeah, so the, uh, you know, we are, yeah, we're sampling now. And so, um, you know, by the time you're seeing this video, if you, you know, reach out to us and if you have a really, you know, compelling application or you just have a, you know, you, you really want to ramp up the amount of computer vision on your product and you need something that's low power and cost effective, you know, please reach out to us and we can, we can certainly, uh, you know, start engaging and, and uh, you know, working on actual hardware. And, you know, this year we're going to be focusing on ramping up the production and next year we, you know, we're going to be starting up the, the you know, the revenue ramp and, you know, really shipping in, in high volumes you know, throughout next year. So, you know, it is real. It's, it's here now. It's, it's, you know, going through the stages of, of production and it will be, you know, out in products, you know, early next year. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And it's exciting to see us, see companies like your, yours go from PowerPoint to Silicon. No, yeah, uh, I mean, it's camera uh, explosion. Well, for, for us, it, it, it was PowerPoint. It was like a dozen test chips and, you know, <laughs> years of, of, you know, crumbling up the paper and throwing away the design and starting over again and, you know, having a dozen different aha moments and then finally raising venture capital and turning it into a real product. So, uh, you Excellent. know, it's been, a, it's been a long journey, but, you know, it's, uh, it, we're really happy that we've, you know, blazed the trail and we, we see a lot of other people coming out now and, and, uh, you know, taking a stab at, at analog compute, we see a ton of academic efforts going on. And that's mm -hmm. fantastic. I mean, I, yeah. I see every conference now has multiple tracks on analog compute. Um, you know, big companies are making announcements. So it's, it's really a, a whole ecosystem and, and community is developing. Um, and, you know, we were really happy that we, uh, we, we, we were able to show that it is viable to build products and they're really compelling when you, when you put them all together. Well, uh, you're in an exciting place. I mean, going from digital analog is the next big step, I believe, for it, for AI inference processing. And uh, it's been fun to watch you develop the company and the technology. I'm really looking forward to seeing this in, in the production and seeing some, uh, seeing some real silicon. Absolutely. Sounds like you got it. Sounds like yeah. you got it. Shipping it. That's fantastic. Congratulations to you and the team. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Congratulations for raising venture capital. The world, world does turn around on money. Yeah. So that's, that's, <laughs> it's, gas, it's gas in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thanks again, Mike. Uh, let's stay in touch and let's have you back on in a few months and uh, update the uh, yeah. audience. Yeah. Happy to do that. And, and yeah. Happy to, happy to keep working together, Carl, and really appreciate the uh, opportunity here. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good to see you, Mike. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.